There are eight planets in the solar system, and all of them are very different. They're of different sizes. They're different distances from the sun. Some of them are made up of gas. Others are small and rocky. But one thing is the same. They're all round. So the question is, why aren't they shaped like pyramids, disks, or cubes? Most planets appear when material in space starts clumping together. After some time, a planet accumulates enough stuff to develop powerful gravity. And gravity is what keeps things together in space. Now, a planet's gravity pulls with the same amount of force from all sides. That's why the overall shape of planets is a sphere. But is it necessary for a planet to be shaped like a sphere? Could, for example, a donut-shaped planet exist out there? According to the laws of physics, it's possible. But such a planet is very unlikely to appear naturally. Plus, it's not clear if toroid planets could be stable. Anyway, let's imagine what our life would be like if our Earth was shaped like a donut. It would most likely have the same position relative to the sun, as well as the same axial tilt. People would still be able to send rockets to space, but they would only do it at the equator of the donut. It would be the best place to break free of our planet's gravitational clutches. Now, gravity would be a bit messed up on this donut-shaped Earth, and your weight would depend on where exactly you are on the planet. In some places, your weight could be up to three times smaller than usual. Our regular round Earth has surface gravity equal to 1 g, but the surface gravity on the donut Earth would be 0.65 g along the poles and a mere 0.3 g at the equator. Walking there would feel like walking on the surface of Mars. But even though the donut-shaped Earth would have weaker gravity, the planet would still be trying to collapse in on itself. In other words, it would constantly fight the urge to become sphere-shaped. To avoid changing its shape, our planet would have to spin much faster than it does now. This way, centrifugal forces would keep the hole in the donut intact. But this super-fast rotation would influence the length of a day on Earth. It would only last 2 hours and 50 minutes. Or if we decided to stick to a good old 24-hour long day, we'd have at least 8 sunrises and sunsets a day. So, we'd have to adapt to working throughout days and nights and sleeping while it's still light outside. It would definitely mess with our biological clock. But it would be even worse for animals whose lives are mostly synced to the patterns of the moon and the sun. They migrate, hunt, and breed based on these patterns. Speaking of the moon, what would happen to the natural satellite of the donut-shaped Earth? Well, we'd still have it. That's the good news but it would probably be pulled toward the hole and keep bobbing up and down in the middle of our planet. On the other hand, it might get affected by the gravity produced by the planet's outer edges and move around Earth following a figure-eight orbit. But there's also some bad news. Any of these orbits would affect tides on Earth, wreaking havoc on the planet. Oceans would have unstable water levels, and people would be unable to build coastal cities. It's hard to predict in which regions people would live on the donut-shaped Earth, most likely the donut hole would be lined with mountains, larger than anything we have on our planet today. But if you decided to live on the edge of the donut-shaped Earth, you'd enjoy awesome views every day. The history of the donut-shaped Earth would also be different. Humans would never cross the ocean. They would develop separately on different continents. On the bright side, no areas of the planet would be too extreme for people to survive, so there wouldn't be any mass extinctions. TRES-2b is a planet where night never ends. And it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here, it's pitch dark and scorching hot. TRES-2b is a gas giant, roughly one and a half times more massive than Jupiter, and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. Lovely. In the star system of 55 Cancri, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather the first because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 Cancri E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava. The other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The planet is always turned to its star on one side. And between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone, 
a thin strip of gloomy nothingness. HD 189377b, well, I'm not going to say that again, is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star. And at first glance, it looks quite pretty, blue and white swirls making up wondrous patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors actually come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. But the worst is that winds reach the speed of 5,400 miles per hour, or almost Mach 7. Well, for comparison, the fastest wind speed on Earth was 254 miles per hour, over 20 times less. Thus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. The next system, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, um, this one, has three exoplanets, which are all being slowly destroyed by their own star. It happens because that star is not a regular. It's a pulsar, a rapidly spinning core of an exploded star. It creates powerful electromagnetic pulses in several directions while rotating at several thousand times per second. As a result, the planets orbiting this deceased star are slowly being eaten away and will eventually disappear entirely. Kepler-70 is a hot blue dwarf star that exploded into a red giant some 18 million years ago. At the time, it was orbited by at least two planets, the closer of which was a Jupiter-like gas giant. Its name was Kepler-70b, and it still exists. But the overgrown star consumed it and transformed it into a blazing hot rocky world. Right now, it's one of the hottest planets ever discovered. Its temperature is higher than the surface of our sun. It was lucky to survive spending time inside the star, but it's evaporating now and will probably be no more in the near future. WASP-12b is one of the weirdest and saddest planets out there. The enormous gravity of its star, combined with the planets consisting mostly of gas, result in the star slowly devouring its protege. WASP-12b has already taken the form of an egg, stretched toward its merciless sun, and it's unable to do anything with its condition. In another 10 million years, the planet will inevitably succumb to the voracious star's appetite. If you ever wondered what it's like to walk on ice and hot coals at the same time, Gliese 436b is a planet that would give you a vivid example. Being extremely close to its sun, the Neptune-sized exoplanet boasts temperatures hotter than a blazing oven. And yet, it's covered in ice, which burns incessantly. This ice is much denser due to the enormous gravity of the planet, staying solid even under extreme conditions and not melting away. No list of frightening worlds could do without mentioning Venus, the Earth's evil twin. The second planet from the Sun has an atmosphere so thick and full of clouds that its surface is much hotter than that of Mercury. Volcanic eruptions constantly thrash Venus. Its gravity is almost a hundred times stronger than ours, and those clouds I mentioned are not made of water, but of sulfuric acid, which condenses and rains down on the ground, adding to the inferno. But even if you were brave, or crazy, enough to try to pass through these clouds, you probably couldn't. The winds up there are as strong as some of the most powerful hurricanes back on Earth. Here we have a very long name for a very, very cold planet. Although the host star is not too far away, it's a small and rather cool red dwarf, whose light and heat barely even reach the planet. The temperatures out there fall as low as minus 370 degrees, which is only marginally warmer than absolute zero. The exoplanet is thus dark, gloomy, and covered in eternal ice that never thaws. Still, if it has a rocky core, it might generate some heat, so, there's a chance that deep below the frozen surface, some unknown alien things might lurk. Dimidium, located roughly 50 light years away from our solar system, is a planet hostile to any living thing on many accounts. It's tidally locked to its sun, which means one of its sides is always facing the star, while the other is always turned away. The hot side is heated to over 1800 degrees perpetually blown over with winds reaching 600 miles per hour. Despite Dimidium being a gas giant, it has a large amount of iron in it, which melts and evaporates in the atmosphere, creating clouds. 
and when those cool down, they fall on the surface in the infernal rain of molten iron. Oxygen is usually viewed as an element that might bring life to a planet, but this is definitely not the case for Osiris. Scientists were shocked to find oxygen on this planet, or rather around it, because it's eight times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. This extreme distance makes Osiris a living melting pot, where anything that could burn will. It's also responsible for a very short orbit of the planet around the star. A year on Osiris is just three and a half days on Earth. To boot, the atmosphere of the planet is constantly blown and melted away by the heat from its sun. Karat Exo 3b is neither as hot nor as cold as some of the others on this list, but it's terrifying in its own more insidious way. It's a gas giant similar in size to Jupiter, yet 20 times denser. This makes this exoplanet's gravity weigh down on everything on its surface 50 times more than it would on Earth. Stepping on it would be your ultimate doom, because you'd be immediately crushed by the density of its atmosphere. Karat 7b is another oven-like world. Its day-to-day -day temperature is over 4,000 degrees. Combined with the rocky surface, it presents an infernal landscape. The rocks on the ground bubble and boil, evaporating in the atmosphere, where they cool down and eventually fall back on the surface in a brimstone rain. The saddest thing about Karat 7b is that it might have once been a gas giant whose atmosphere melted away from the heat, leaving only the scorched core. We're used to thinking that asteroids are the only free-floating rocks in space, but things like OTS-44 make you think twice and shiver. Imagine a planet about 11 times more massive than Jupiter roaming in space without being bound to the orbit of any star. Given its gargantuan size and mass, if OTS-44 collides with any other planet, it would utterly destroy it and go on floating as if nothing happened. Scarier still. Scientists are sure there are millions of such rogue planets out there, just waiting to be discovered. There's no hard proof of their existence yet, but theoretically, carbon planets have formed somewhere closer to the center of our galaxy. Any oxygen getting in their atmosphere will get into a reaction with carbon and transform into CO2, forming black, toxic clouds. On the ground, there would be oceans made of tar, spewing up geysers of methane and crude oil. There would be rains, too, but they'd be far from refreshing. Torrents of pure gasoline and hot liquid asphalt would blast the ground and probably burst into flames on impact. Hard to imagine anything that would survive such conditions. Is that Earth you can see at a distance? Right. Just look at it, floating in space hanging out with its planet buddies. You spot orange-red Mars and Jupiter with its asteroid belt. Even tiny Pluto is there. All these planets keep their distance from each other, moving along in their own orbits. They're not very social, you see. But that's a good thing. It would cause nothing but trouble if they started to bump into each other. But even though there are others, Earth is the only planet we know that has life. And we've even figured out why. It's because it was lucky enough to appear in the best spot in our solar system, in the Goldilocks zone. Scientists say the key ingredient for life is water. But, well, there's water on Mercury. This planet has deposits of water ice at its south and north poles. But only because those places never see the light. Everywhere else, water simply evaporates from the surface of the planet. Mercury is way too close to the sun. Pluto has some water too. Astronomers even think the dwarf planet might be up to 30% water. But it's frozen. Unlike Mercury, Pluto's too far away from the sun, which is why all its water is in the form of ice. But Earth hovers in a perfect spot called the habitable zone. It has the right temperature for the water to remain liquid and for all forms of life to flourish. But what if Earth was the only planet in the solar system? No Mars, no Jupiter, no Mercury, no Venus. Things might have turned out a little different than what we're used to. Remember that massive asteroid that hit the Earth around 66 million years ago? 
Well, without Jupiter and its asteroid belt, our planet would be constantly hit by meteorites and asteroids. And some of them would be just as big as the one that caused all that sorrow to the dinosaurs. These rocky fellas would be roaming around in space with no one and nothing to stop them. And if Earth was the only planet out there, it would also be their only target. But that's not all. Look at all this huge space Earth would have all to itself. It means our planet would have an opportunity to travel a bit. It could even choose to leave the Goldilocks zone. But then, would life on the planet still be the same? So let's say Earth started drifting away from the sun. Then, it'd soon get too cold on the planet. Picture a place where the sun doesn't shine anymore. Dark, cold, covered in ice and snow all year round. That would be our Earth if it traveled further from the sun. If this happened, our cities would start to look very different. Right now, Earth is full of life. Come to any park and you'll see green trees and grass everywhere. There will be people walking, sitting on the benches, enjoying the sun. You'll definitely spot someone playing soccer or frisbee. On the park's lawns, there will be people resting on their blankets, soaking up the sun. A few people will be reading their books, looking relaxed and happy. Back in space, you see Earth again. The planet is still in its favorite spot. That's why life is so beautiful down there. But wait, is it moving? Our planet is definitely further from the sun now. Has it changed things for Earth? It actually looks a bit bluer now. Down there, famous Golden California is not so golden anymore. It's gloomy and dark, much like all other places on Earth. New York is covered in ice. Even in the hottest places, the temperatures are now below freezing, including tropical destinations like the Bahamas. After a while, liquid water turns into ice. The oceans now look like giant skating rinks, except there's no one to skate there since the planet has become way too cold to support life. Okay, then what if, instead of drifting further away from the sun, Earth moved closer, with people still aboard. Whoa, the temperatures here are crazy, too hot to handle. The climate would be getting hotter and hotter. Natural disasters would start to occur more often. Hurricanes and floods would be a common thing on Earth now. And pretty soon, the planet would get too hot for people to handle. Particles from the sun would become a serious threat. The atmosphere would be struggling to protect Earth from solar radiation but this shield would be growing weaker. Liquid water would be nowhere to be found anymore, maybe only in underground deposits. Earth would look a bit like Mars, all rocky and barren. The Mississippi River would dry up and leave behind a huge canyon. All the oceans would be gone too. At the moment, the Mariana Trench is the deepest known place on Earth. It's incredibly hard to reach its bottom because of the immense water pressure there. But without water, trips to the deepest spot on Earth would be possible. It would help people uncover some more of Earth's secrets. If people still lived on the dry and scorching hot planet, that is. In other words, if someone was to explore Earth after the planet had moved closer to the sun, everything would be completely different. But what if Earth didn't move at all and everything remained the same? The only difference, there would be no other planets around us it would change the way people explore space. Sure, there would still be navigation, communication, and weather satellites, and maybe space telescopes. But there wouldn't be any other space objects close enough for people to send missions there. This would affect the future too. If people had no desire or opportunity to go to space, they would invest in their home planet. They would build sky cities instead of looking for other planets to colonize. These days, if you get a state-of-the-art telescope, you'll see distant stars and other planets. The better the telescope, the more detail there is for you to see. But with no other planets out there, the picture of space wouldn't be so exciting. Stars would still be visible, and you might even spot a meteorite or two. And you'd definitely see the moon, but that's about it. Space agencies would mostly be focused on keeping Earth secure mainly because asteroids would become frequent visitors. 
to protect the planet, scientists would have to figure out ways to get rid of them. Like a massive laser beam. When turned on, it could go all the way to the moon and even further. Instead of building rockets to explore space, SpaceX and NASA would be in the asteroid clearing business. People wouldn't even think of trying to contact other civilizations. If there were no planets similar to Earth, they would consider it a wasted effort. This means no radio signals being constantly sent out to space. A curious fact, in February of 2008, the Beatles song Across the Universe was beamed into deep space. It was done to celebrate both the song's 40th anniversary and NASA's 50th anniversary. In the 70s, people also sent a radio signal out into space. It contained some basic information about humans and the solar system. But it was more a feat of strength for technology than an attempt to contact any alien buddies we might have. With no planets around, the world of sci-fi would change too. There would be no more movies about deep space exploration. No massive spaceships and rockets would appear on the big screen. And since there would be no expeditions to other planets, no rovers would be sent to space to look for signs of life and explore new worlds, like what the rovers on Mars are doing right now. People would concentrate more on their own planet. For example, they would begin to explore its insides. New technologies would allow us to dig much, much deeper, all the way through Earth's crust and further. And doesn't a trip to the planet's core sound exciting? Instead of astronauts, there would be explorers of the deep underground. New drilling technologies would be invented to make the digging process more effective. There would be new types of vehicles. They would be created to drill and protect explorers from the enormous underground pressure. While exploring the world under the planet's surface, people would likely find absolutely new life forms. Those would be mysterious creatures that evolved to survive in the dark in extreme temperatures and with barely any food. It certainly helped people understand more about their home planet.